Hey everybody, this is Caesar with Small Engine Velocity coming at you with the third episode. Two plus one, or three, or zero plus three, or three plus zero equals the third episode of this series for building the Zuma into a 158cc monster. Everybody that I've talked to so far who's had this 158cc kit says it's amazingly different. So, why not do it, right? This is the right place to do it, small. That's pretty small, right? This is pretty small. Engine, I like engines, and velocity, so perfect. Anyways, if you are behind and you have not seen the other episodes in the series yet, please check it out here. This is the playlist for the two episodes that probably, that should have already released by now. Uh, hopefully three didn't come out before two. But yeah, so before we begin with what we're doing today, let's go ahead and roll that intro. So for today, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the stock throttle body right here, and you'll notice that one side is flat and the hose goes over that. So here, let me give you a visual example. All right, so imagine this off this pizza box. This is a lengthwise cut of, of a tube. So this is one wall and this is another wall, right? This is the tube right? The intake manifold has a part that goes in here, right? Like that. And then it goes into the carb and does its little, you know, air stuff on the inside. So what's happening is that when the air comes in here, this way, this way, and this way, some of the air is running against this flat area right here and causing little turbulence there. So the idea is to cut these in like that so that the air moves in more of a, a flowy fashion, kind of narrows it in there a little bit. Hopefully you can see this and it makes any sense. People like to do that on the, the Ruckus Carb. I thought it might be good to do here. And it is a free mod. Like, I mean, apart from needing a grinder and a lot of time, it should be easy. And then today, the, the one part that I was having trouble with is the cam. I have to put the new cam on and it's four valve. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take that apart and put that in. And then uh, we are free to go ahead and do all the other parts, piston, piston rings, cylinder, put the head on. I'll put everything back together again uh, and torque everything back down. So let's go ahead and start with the intake, oh, excuse me, the throttle body and doing a little bit of free mod machining on it. So for this part, we're gonna go ahead and use the air grinder with this cone piece. And the idea is to bevel this edge on the inside so that uh, when the air flows in, it doesn't have turbulence running into this thing right here, uh, this flat spot. I don't know how much I'm gonna bevel. I shoved a rubber glove in here right now <laughs> so that I can keep bits from flying on the inside. But uh, let's go ahead and, I wonder if this is a good angle. It's not a really great angle. Hold on. All right, that's a little bit better. You can still see kind of what I'm doing. Anyways, let's hear what this sounds like first. <laughs> okay, so it's beveled, kind of. Let's see if we can bevel it all the way to the edge here without actually going too far. But anyways, let's time lapse this real quick.
So here's the final product of what I was doing. Uh, I really tried really hard to make the bevel as even as I could all the way across um, and make it smooth. I kind of wanted it to kind of be like a, a, what's it called? A, a velocity stack, even though it's not really a velocity stack. So I use the macro lens that I have to kind of get as close as I can. And, and it is not perfect by any means. Uh, you can still see some of the scratching. I could sand it more, which I'm probably going to do off camera, but I wanted to kind of get the gist of what I was trying to do here. Uh, and on the inside, you can see where the file was kind of rubbing on the inside. The end of it kind of scratching up the inside a little bit. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But the idea is that the flat side that was there now is now around beveled edge for air to evenly flow across and not cause any kind of weird turbulence on the inside. Although those scratches on the inside really do annoy me. But you know what? No one's going to be able to see it except for me. Um, I tried to avoid whatever that is. I think it's the map sensor or MAF sensor inside of there. Um, I did get some dirt on it and I, kind of, I, didn't, I don't think I really scratched it too much. But I don't think I did any damage to it. But overall, I think that the uh, the edge came out pretty good. You can still see some nicks and, and stuff like that. And there's still a little bit of a flat edge around it, but it looks pretty good. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and use the macro lens and kind of take a look at the valves and some other parts of the, the head that we're looking at today. So this is the, the valves. I believe this is the intake side. And uh, you can see the springs and, and the adjustments. Uh, I notice on this motor it doesn't use the little um, spacers like it does on the Honda Ruckus. It looks like a GY6 with the uh, screw and the adjustment on the top. Now, I know I might disappoint some people, but I'm not going to do any sanding on the intake side of the uh, valve of the head because I don't have any tools small enough to reach inside of here to smooth those out. But you can still definitely see the casting marks on the inside that, you know, if I did do some work on this, it would make probably some noticeable gains, I assume. Now, the exhaust side, since it's covered in so much soot, it's really hard to see <laughs> on the inside. But from what I see, it's pretty much the same thing. I I'm, not, I'm just not going to mess with it. Now, here is the part that we're doing next. This is the cam. And then there's that little retaining clip, and it holds the the, uh, the the cam, and then the little rods that hold the rockers across the top. So, you know, this is the part that I was worried about because it just seemed way more complicated than it did than the GY6. All right, so now that I got the, the head off, I did the, the beveling and polishing on the other part. Let's move on to the to the cam. So I already did this, as you know, I my mic died, so I didn't get very far here. So this right here was the bolt that went in it earlier, it threads into it, but there's a Allen wrench at the top, which is a retaining clip that holds all this in. Sorry, I forgot the light. There you go, see, it holds the clip in. So we can take this out, which is only hand tight, and there's the retainer clip that, that pretty much holds all this together in there. So. What I ran into is that there's these things right here. The uh, these are the ar the things that the rocker arms go through right here. So what I need is a slide hammer to be able to pull this out, and this is the solution that I <laughs> and this is the solution I came up with. So what I ended up doing is I got a rod and a piece of pipe, put two pieces of metal on the end with holes. I put a a, a part for the end, welded it all together um, pretty decently, I think, and then welded the bolt onto the end right here so that I could thread it in and then and then pull out the part that I need. Uh, I didn't want to buy one of these, so I just ended up making one instead, right? Just make it if you can. Okay, so we'll do first is we'll try to take out one side right here thread it enough and use the slide hammer and 
know it's coming out. You can kind of see it. It's moved a little bit. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I was able to get a uh, um, a full, not a manual, but a like a one of those Chilton type things for this bike. Oh, there you go. Ta-da! There's one. You know, I forgot my gloves. My wife likes to uh, call me a wuss because I like to wear gloves. And that's not true. Uh, I can wear gloves. Uh, I just don't want to have long-term damage in my brain from all these chemicals I'm sticking my hands in to affect me in some way. Ta-da! There you go. Feels kind of violent taking that out, right? So, supposedly I'm supposed to be able to take, oh, there you go. How do I know which sides? Well, I guess it only works one way or another, right? So here's the other side right here. Oh, it's kind of crammed in there. Can it come out? Well, it doesn't have to come out. I can put this in here. Oh, there you go. Ta-da, old cam. Old non-performance cam, right? Looks like it doesn't look like it's, doesn't look like it's horrible. So it's the old one. Here's the new one, right? Felt like there's a little bit of dirt on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off. <sighs> Put this back in. Oh, I don't need that. There you go. Then I can put this back in place. You know what, I probably need to loosen these because the cam shape is different. What is that, a six? Maybe an eight? Yep, eight. Probably should have loosened these first. Loose, loose. So it says I can do it like this. Tap it back into place, but I gotta be careful with the alignment. How do I know if it's... How do I know if it's lined up or not? It's such a tight fit. Okay, so it's not lined up right because the tappers aren't hitting the middle of the ring. So I gotta pull this back out with the puller again. Let's see if we can pre-align this. You know what, when you get old, ah, where is it? All right, let's try this again. There we go. All the way through. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Other side. All right, this one I took all the way out. Put this in. Make sure it's as lined up as we can get it. There we go. There we go. All right, that means this can go back on. Everything feels like it's covered in dirt. So there are, now that I have the manual, I have all the torque specs for all this. So I'll torque spec this later. I just wanted to see how hard it was to get this. All right, looks like we're good. Well, while we're here and we can see the bottom, it's super reflective. There we go. Now that we can see the bottom, Maybe we can do a little bit of cleanup with this very small wire brush. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Because I can? Because it's dirty? Because it's not shiny? <laughs> My dad always taught me that if you already got it apart and you, can, and you have the ability to do it, just go ahead and clean it now. You know, how, is this going to give me performance? No, but it may give me longevity on the motor or something like that, right? That was easy. Remember, this motor only has 1,200 miles on it. Maybe about 1,200 miles on it. Ooh, I didn't get this. So I wasn't really expecting a whole ton of carbon buildup in the motor. Right? It's cleaner. Don't want to move, whittle any of the metal away because if you whittle the metal away, 
then uh, you're gonna lose some compression because you're losing mass. I'm gonna put this here so I don't lose it. And we'll put it away. All right, so after all that effort and getting that cam in and doing the extra stuff on the intake, uh, sorry, the throttle body, it's not gonna be a measurable gain because I didn't do any measuring before I actually did any of this stuff, but I do have top speed gains and the CVT is exactly the same. So I might be able to tell. But this, all, all this stuff that we just did that sets me up for going to, hit, uh, going to be able to set up the, uh, and do the rest of the build uh, fairly easy, as long as I don't need any specialty tools. But I didn't need any specialty tools taken apart, so I think we're pretty clear. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video on the series, and hopefully we'll be putting the motor together. See you then.